All right, folks, the day has almost come. It is almost upon us, the end of the road for this year's uh, award season, the Academy Awards. Um, so uh, it's Wednesday the 5th. The awards are on Sunday the 9th, so we've only got a few days left. Uh, so I've kind of, you know, thought about a few things. I've changed a couple things around. We've got some, uh, upsets brewing, potentially. We've got, uh, a lot of stuff that can happen on Sunday. A few categories that feel a little open. A few categories that are closed shut. We know what's going to happen. We're, you know, 99% sure. Uh, we were 99% sure with La La Land, too, so you can never say anything anymore, I would say, is a sure, sure bet with the Oscars. Maybe with a couple exceptions this year, so, um, Yeah. All right, well, uh, should we go ahead and start? Uh, yeah, let's let's get started here with the uh, live-action short category. Uh, we'll kind of work our way up here. Uh, for live-action short, I did switch over here, um, and I'm I'm thinking maybe a little too cynically here, but uh, I'm picking the uh, the more or less long shot here, Nefta Football Club. Again, I you look at these titles, and it's like Saria, Brotherhood, The Neighbor's Window. It's like I think a lot of the people that are blind voting in this category, the people that are like, oh, which one sounds the best? Oh, Nefta Football Club. I'll vote for that one. You know, you can make the same argument that we did last time, uh, um, Heaven is a Traffic Jam on the 405 and stuff. It's like the title that sounds the most fun or the most familiar. It's like, oh, everybody likes football. Yeah, we just had the Super Bowl, you know, like a couple weeks or a week before the Oscars this year. It's like, yeah, let's yeah, let's pick that one. So, I, 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 I again, I might be too cynical here, but... Uh, that's my vote for uh, for that one there. It's it's a long shot, but sometimes you got to go for the long shots here. Uh, documentary short, I've got Learning to Skate in a War Zone, uh, Skateboard in a War Zone. Yeah, this has been really the front runner, I think, since they announced the uh, um, the uh, 10 that, that could be nominated. And I think every almost everybody's had it up front since then. I'm Yeah, I, I'm right there with them. Uh, animated short, I think Hair Love has this one. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, Nobody else has really said anything much about what else could upset, so that that feels like a done deal. Uh, I did switch uh, for the visual effects category to the BAFTA winner, and that is 1917. Uh, it feels like First Man last year. It might not be the most effects, but it's you know Best Picture nominee. Or uh, F First Man was not Best Picture last year, but it was felt like the most Best Picturey of the nominees. So that definitely helped it. I think 1917, even though its effects again are not heavy in your face. I think it's one that'll uh, be pretty good here, even though it didn't win the Guild for supporting effects, which was the Irishman. Um, I just think there's, uh, you know, I, I actually moved the Lion King up to second place after Avengers lost, lost to BAFTA. It just feels like that one is just really losing traction here, whereas Lion King, you know, had the visual effects win uh, for the uh, effects heavy films at the uh, Visual Effects Society. So it, it definitely um, definitely has a shot here as well, but... It just, you know, even though it was a $1.5, $1.6 billion movie, uh, even though it, you know, really did well there at the box office, critically it was very mixed. Fan reception, I think, after the first, you know, couple weeks, everybody's like, eh, it wasn't that great. So I, it just doesn't feel, you know, like they're going to go for it this time. You know, they went with John Favreau, one of his films, uh, just a few years ago with Jungle Book, which was much more cl critically respected, fan-wise much better recepted. Uh, you could even, you know, many argue, uh, eh, I don't know, I need to see it again, but it's, you know, that version was better than the original. I don't think anybody anywhere has said that at all about The Lion King this year, that it's better than the original. I don't think anybody ever will. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's just, it, it just doesn't feel like the, the pick this year to me in that category. So, uh, so I went 1917 on this one. Um, and then, uh, the sound category, starting with sound editing, I did switch in this one as well. I'm, I'm going 197, or no, not this one, sorry, 1917 is still the winner here for me. Um, uh, sound mixing, I switched to 1917. Uh, they have just one sound category at BAFTA, sure, but I think, uh, this one will win both. You know, it feels like Dunkirk and, and Bo Rap last year. Even though we could be due for another split, like we had the year of, uh, Whiplash and, um, uh, what was the other one? American Sniper, that's right. Yeah, American Sniper and Whiplash, or a few years ago with uh, the La La Land year where we had um, Arrival and uh, Hacksaw Ridge split. Um, I don't know. I, it, this just feels like 1917 to me in both categories. Uh, let's see here. We'll switch over to the makeup and hairstyling category. That's I, I still have Bombshell out front there. Yeah, I think, uh, again, you know, like we mentioned last time, Judy has that ever so slight chance to really upset here, but... Bombshell just feels like it has it in the bag here. Let's see, production design, was this was another switch. I am going 1917 here as well after the BAFTA win, and also 
Uh, we'll talk more about it, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, even though it does have the period win at the Production Designers Guild, uh, I'm just really not feeling much love in the room anymore for Hollywood, even after the Critics' Choice win and the Golden Globe wins. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have more on this later when we get to Best Picture, because, yeah, you can probably sense by now I've, I've, I've kind of changed tunes there for that one as well. Uh, costume design, uh, I'm again, maybe I'm yeah just too reliant this year, but I'm going back to BAFTA for this one with Little Women. Um, I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and JoJo have the more flashier costumes in a way they could really kind of, you know, be at odds on the ballot and stuff. They could kind of cancel each other out. Um, and uh, I think that clears the path for Little Women. Again, the most obvious kind of uh, pick in this category. But, you know, sometimes the most obvious one is the one that does win. Uh, let's see, for the music categories, this these could be actually two of the easier awards for the night, potentially. Um, best song, I'm still picking uh, Rocket Man, I'm Gonna Love Me Again. Um, yeah, that, that just feels like that one's out ahead of everybody else there. Uh, best score is Joker. Yeah, that one's ahead, again, after BAFTA win. It's won everywhere else it could. Gilder is uh, just lighting it up right now. So um, Thomas Newman's going to go 0 for 15, even in a movie that I have winning the most Oscars on Sunday. I don't think 1917 goes along for the ride here. I think uh, everybody's familiar enough with the Joker score. I don't think this is a blind vote. Oh, 1917 gets this one, too. I don't think so. Uh, let's see here. Film editing. This was a switch for me as well. And I have to almost go more with my heart this time than with, you know, more strategic than I was before. And that's Ford v. Ferrari I have winning this one now. Again, a BAFTA win was huge here. Parasite was not nominated in that category, BAFTA. That's true. Uh, and also Ford v. Ferrari was beat by Parasite at the um, Ace Eddie Awards. But the Ace Eddie winner doesn't always repeat at the Oscars. We've seen this with um, uh, the, the big example I always think of is when Captain Phillips beat uh, Gravity at the Ace Eddie's. And I was like, I fell for that and it, it didn't pan out. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, Hacksaw Ridge, as I recall, did not win Ace Eddie that year. I think that was Arrival. Yeah, I think Arrival won Ace Eddie that year and they, they went with something else. So, you know, that, that can happen, you know, quite often. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, Ford v. Ferrari wins this one. Uh, cinematography, no change here. It's 1917. That one has pretty much been a, bit, a done deal since we, uh, uh, since we knew not only that Roger Deakins was shooting the movie, but that it was going to be that one-take, you know, uh, style there. We knew that one was, was done. Uh, for documentary feature, I'm, I'm keeping this one for, for American Factory. I don't go with the BAFTA winner here for Sama. I think there's a slight chance it could win. It's on, I believe it's it was a PBS, was kind of a distributor here domestically. Uh, so sometimes, you know, more widely seen, like you could argue the uh, Icarus, the Netflix documentary, um, you know, uh, helped that one, you know, because of how well it could be seen. But I think uh, American Factory just feels like it's, it's uh, really far ahead here. So I have that one uh, picked here. International film is Parasite. Yeah, that that's, that and cinematography are the two easiest awards of the night for sure. Uh, anything else there would be a gigantic, you know, uh, earth-shattering upset for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, animated feature is... Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with Klaus here after the, uh, the BAFTA win, Annie Award win. Uh, it is Netflix. Again, widely seen, you know, helps it. Toy Story 4 could be the blind vote here. Again, you know, it's like, oh, we, it's Pixar. We're relying, you know, we know on Pixar that are dependable studio here and everything. And uh, and the animated short character, one, uh, Kit Bull, I think I've, I've moved that one up to second place. You know, that's another Pixar short who almost always wins that category, even if their feature that wasn't, you know, um, uh, that didn't go with the short, you know, as they didn't do it for Toy Story this year. But um, usually the short that goes with the animated feature wins, but... Um, even when the, the animated feature is not nominated, like uh, I think it was Piper won the same year that Finding Dory was not nominated and stuff. But, you know, I, I just, again, Hair Love is so far ahead there. And as far as um, animated feature, yeah, it just feels like Toy Story 4, the love just, again, like Avengers and, you know, a few of those other kind of billion dollar movies like Joker for uh, some of the other categories, it's just not there. It's, you know, they're, they're kind of thinking more... Um, you know, stuff that, you know, didn't gross a billion dollars, which, you know, might hurt, you know, my uh, predictions here, because last year they really liked a movie that grossed nearly a billion dollars, Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, so, you know, that, you know, that could end up being a huge, huge mistake, but I, I don't think so. It just, I, it's, you know, you could feel a love for Bohemian Rhapsody alongside the money behind it, whereas Joker, you know, feels too divisive, I think, for some members of the Academy. It's just divisive enough, I think, to the point where it's got a couple categories for sure. After that, it's it's a long shot and just about everything else. 
Um, but uh, Klaus does, is not really feeling like a long shot anymore. It feels like that one can actually uh, happen. All right, we'll move on now to the screenplay categories. I'm going with the WGA winners here. I'm uh, switching over to JoJo for adapted screenplay for sure. The BAFTA win helped uh, definitely, uh, even though Little Women we knew was not going to be a gigantic threat there at BAFTA. You know, JoJo was kind of pegged to be ahead. I picked it as well. Um, it feels like there's enough love behind the movie, even though, again, this one is a little divisive, that it's got to get something. Even you know, even though Three Billboards was, I would argue, more more so divisive. Green Book, way more divisive, and those had multiple wins. JoJo, I can see at least getting one win here for screenplay. Um, if it would win anywhere else, I would think maybe an upset win in, in uh, costume design. But yeah, I, w- I would definitely say screenplay is the best bet for JoJo right now. Uh, and again, I'm I'm very wary though that uh, uh, Greta uh, Gerwig could definitely come through and uh, and win for this one. But it, and again, it's dependent on how many people are are really looking at that category and voting for what they want to win versus making a more or less you know. Uh, political statement. I, I wouldn't say it's political. It's more just a, you know, this is who we like statement. But um, yeah, uh, color that as you will. Um, original screenplay. Uh, this one I did switch as well. I am going Parasite here. Uh, the WGA win helped. Uh, it won at BAFTA over Hollywood, which was not eligible at WGA. Otherwise, it beat everybody else that's been on this list uh, before. So uh, I, I think I think that is definitely something that can happen here. Um uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see about this one. This, this was a category I was very close to sticking with Quentin here, but again, you know, even, I think Academy voters know because Django was, you know, pretty recent that Quentin has won before in this category. Bong Joon-ho, sure, he'll pick up a, an Oscar win more or less, you know, uh, for, uh, I think, I forget if it's the producer or the director who wins, uh, or can claim the Oscar for foreign language, or if they just, uh, you know, the, I think the Globes just claim it's like the the country or whatever, but it's like, I think the director claims the win for uh, international. Um, even though, yeah, he's a writer on the movie, if he wins a director, obviously he'll pick up an award. He's a producer on the film, so if it wins Best Picture, he'll pick up an award. I, I, I just feel like there's more, definitely more cool buzz on him this year than even Quentin, you know, who normally every year would be the most cool person in the room, but... Not this time. Not this time. Uh, even yeah, yeah. I would even argue Taika Waititi has more cool on, in the room than uh, than Quentin this year. But yeah, again, this goes with my theory too. With uh, with Hollywood, uh, we'll talk more about that with Best Picture as well here. But uh, yeah, uh, getting into the acting races, you know, you could say it's a snooze fest, but I don't care. I, I like getting easy predictions right. Uh, supporting actress is Laura Dern. Um, I, some people are really going on the limb for Scarlett Johansson to win here because she is a double nominee, and it doesn't happen too often when you have somebody nominated twice in the same year and they don't win at least one award. Uh, Kate Blanchett did it uh, in, I think it was, 07, was it 07? I think it was 07, yeah. It was like the Elizabeth and I'm Not There year. She didn't win for either. Um, let see, there was another example. Uh, not, okay, I was like, I was thinking of one, but it didn't, ha- yeah. You know, more commonly we think of, like, uh, Jamie Foxx and uh, um, uh, Al Pacino and, you know, stuff like that, where they do, they win one of the awards, but, um, yeah, but they more tend to win the lead category is, is the cat- uh, the case there. Um, probably the, the closest comparison definitely in this case would be uh, Tootsie with uh, Jessica Lang. She won in that category for that film and supporting, was nominated for Francis the same year in lead, but won for supporting. And that was, you know, Best Picture nominee. Francis, I believe, only had the Best Actress nomination. But, you know, and when you look at it, JoJo and uh, Marriage Story, I believe, are both at six nominations. So they're about on even keel there. But um, you could definitely argue JoJo has a little bit more, you know, uh, spin behind it in, like, you know, Best Picture, definitely, and a few of those other categories. But, um, yeah, I, I, Laura Dern just feels too far ahead. She's won virtually everything she could. Uh, she's Hollywood royalty coming from two very famous, beloved actors. She's been around forever. The Pretty Little Lies, the, or, or uh, Big Little Lies, I'm sorry, the other show <laughs> that I don't watch. Um, uh, Big Little Lies and, you know, all the work she's done on TV in the last couple of years and all the blockbusters she's done going back to, you know, you could go back to Blue Velvet Jurassic Park years. You can go back as far as you want to or stay as recent as you want to she's definitely been an overdue actress for an oscar win and i think this this one will finally get it for her uh for supporting actor it's brad pitt once upon a time in hollywood definitely the most guaranteed win for hollywood on sunday is is this category uh lead actress renee zellweger she's going to bring it home for judy garland who never did win an oscar in her age um so renee will will take one for her definitely i think uh and then joaquin phoenix 
far away and ahead going to win for best actor i think um again you know i did watch the speech finally for his uh, bafta acceptance and all that and yeah i, I think anybody who watches that speech afterwards is going to say you know if i wasn't voting for him before i'll, I'll peg him in this time yeah I, I think i think he's got that but um yeah uh, best director i think is also done deal for sam mendes 1917 Again, you know, you could make the argument, again, if it's a just-across-the-vote popularity contest, Bong Joon-ho might win this, but Mendes has won everywhere he could. Again, he tied with Bong Joon-ho at Critics' Choice. Other than that, he's won every award he could. Uh, he's, I think he's got this in the bag, and again, it's a film that the Academy really loves. Okay, Best Picture. Where did I go? Uh, where am I at? Um, <clears throat> this one, let me say this. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think... People have very much kind of gone to sleep on this, and this is something I, I thought, you know, kind of picked up on, and I'm like, holy shit, that's correct. Since the Critics' Choice Night, it has lost every category it has been nominated in, with the exception of Brad Pitt at every award show he's been at, and the Production Designers Guild for period. Other than that, it has lost everything. It lost nine of its ten bids at BAFTA, Lost everything at the Screen Actors Good Award, again, except for Brad Pitt. Uh, you know, uh, lost to PGA, lost to DGA. The wind is out of the sails for this movie. It's just, it just feels done. It just feels like, even though, yes, it is, you know, well-respected, it's got 10 nominations, it's in virtually everywhere it could be except film editing, it just feels like the wind is out of the sails for Hollywood. Uh, the love is just not there uh it feels like after critics choice it's like it almost feel like that you know as as can sometimes happen that almost painted a, a target on its back kind of similar to boyhood a few years ago where it's like all of a sudden they're like uh we want to go for something a little more you know you know something different uh in that case they wanted to go for something you know a little more cooler a little more hip a little more fun you could argue you know Birdman. um and this year it's like um <clears throat> even though 1917 continues to win a lot of major awards including pga dga bafta globes etc again i am just not feeling it in this category just something doesn't feel right when I, if i think about putting it in my number one slot jojo in the meantime does have the wga win does you know had the major win at bafta there for screenplay uh it had the sag ensemble nomination and it's really you know across the other guilds you know uh ace eddie for the comedy one costume designers uh for that one it's gotten a lot of guild wins. Is it enough to win Best Picture? You no, know, no, I don't think so. I think definitely the the win for screenplay is definitely something that uh, they will celebrate. So that leave one that leaves one option. I'm doing it, folks. I'm you know what? I'm gonna burn the bridge that I set up last year, where I said I'm never gonna do that again. Fuck the bridge. I'm burning it. I'm going Parasite. I'm going Parasite in a surprise final. You know, uh, th I thought about it again, and I'm like, you know what? I, I think it can do it this time. I think it can do it this time because, you know, obviously the biggest comparison everybody keeps saying, you know, well, Roma, you know, was more the boring artistic achievement. You know, Parasite is a fun, you know, uh, kind of dark comedy at times, thriller at times, uh, drama at times. You know, it's everything you could want in a movie. Uh, really, again, aside from the acting categories, it got everything it could possibly need, editing, directing, screenplay, uh, it could potentially win uh, two of those awards. Director is not so much. And it just feels right with three wins because we saw Green Book take three wins. We talk, saw Moonlight take three wins. It would kind of, you know, complete the triple crown of the, the films that rhyme, Moonlight, Spotlight, Parasite. That's just a cool thing. <laughs> but uh, aside from that uh, silly stuff, I, I, I look at 1917 and I get the feeling and it kind of epiphany kind of moment, uh, I was thinking about actually uh, just about 24 hours ago, I said, it's gravity. It's gravity. It's got director. It's got a whole bunch of those tech awards. It won PGA, technically, won DGA, did very well at BAFTA, including Best British Film. Sure, ba uh, uh, gravity did not win Best Film. And uh, true, you know, gravity did not win the direct, or uh, it won directing at Globes, but not um, picture at the Globes like 1917 did. But it's going to have so many of those tech categories. Again, I have it, uh, five of those tech categories and one for director. It, I just get the feeling that what happened with Gravity, uh, on top of, well, 12 Years a Slave was also out front, so we knew that one was likely to win. Gravity could be the upset win that year. 
it was close, but we knew it was probably more likely 12 years of slave. It was more like a 55-45 or a 60-40 chance there. With 1917, I get the feeling like they did with Gravity. It's like, we like this movie so much. Yeah, we'll put it here, put it here. Best picture. Man, look at my look at my ballot. I've got so many down for Gravity. I want... Maybe I should just give something else. You know, best picture. Maybe I should put that at like number three or number four. Maybe number two. But my, yeah, my passion vote is this, you know. That year it could have been, you know, Captain Phillips. Could have been American Hustle. You know, could have been that. And it's like 12 Years a Slave. It's like, well, it's, you know, Gravity's made my number two. But 12 Years a Slave is number three. Or you could flip it around, you know. 12 Years a Slave is number two. So I'll put Gravity number three, you know. I gave it that, I gave it so many awards. And that has really been the mentality of Oscar voters in the last decade. We Again, you have to go back to The Hurt Locker the last time we saw a Best Picture winner take so many categories. True, we could be overdue, and that could happen again with 1917 this year. Uh, if it does win picture, that would be a, the seventh win for it. And I can see it, I think it taps out at seven. Um, screenplay feels like a lost cause, um, <laughs> frankly. Uh, score, it could happen. I think it's the second place one in that category, but I don't think it can win there. And what's the other... I'm missing one. Oh, uh, makeup, yeah. Makeup, uh, it feels like maybe third, maybe fourth. I don't think it can win there, so... I think it taps out at seven of its ten. I don't think it can go eight or nine. And it's like, I just think about it, again, you know, like Mad Max, another film that just did so well. It didn't win director, but it, you know, it did get tons and tons of those tech categories. Uh, true, it didn't have really the prestige and a factor, I think, to, to be a, a true Best Picture contender that year. But La La Land is another one that comes to mind. You know, so many people were like, oh, La La Land, La La Land, here, yeah, yeah. And even that had an acting win. You know, so again, not an exact comparison as to 1917. Um, and also Gravity did have an acting nomination, at least. Uh, but it missed screenplay, which 1917 is the inverse of that. It has screenplay, but not acting. Um, so again, not a direct, direct comparison, but pretty damn close when you think about it. It's like, uh, La La Land, same deal. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll put that. Yeah, picture, I would, eh, maybe like three. Let's see. Mo I, I like Moonlight a lot. I'll put that number two or, yeah, I, my passion vote is uh, Lion, but number one I, uh, you know, for that. But uh, number two, I think Moonlight. No, I'll put La La Land three, maybe four. Yeah, I like Manchester. Yeah, it's like, I feel like that, that could have been a, a, another one that year, That another uh, scenario like that, where just, again, so many awards go to, you know, a certain film, you just feel empty by the end when you get to Best Picture uh, or you circle back to Best Picture and you're like, oh, I don't know. And then you go back and it's like, if maybe you originally put 1917 down pretty high up, but then it's like, oh, I don't know. Whereas Parasite always, you know, for, not always for me, but, you know, since I saw the film, it's like, I'm like, man, I don't see, you know, people that see the movie are definitely going to put that high on their ballots if they liked it a lot. If it's not number one, it's not number two, it's three, four. If it's not those, it's two or one. It's like virtually that. And even, you know, again, even though there's a little bit, you know, the thought that kept crossing my mind a little recently was a little bit of a xenophobia kind of feel of this is a film, you know, we've, you know, the, I can see some Oscar voters thinking this way and it could, you know, could end up hurting it a lot is some voters are like, hmm, I don't know if I can vote number one for a film that we didn't produce or the Brits didn't produce. Let's, yeah, let's put that down five or something, you know. Sure, some voters might do that. That could very well happen. But, and again, you know, so many voters could also think, well, I gave it international film. That's like best picture in that category. So it's like, I, I get that. But it's like, I just don't know if 1917 has what it takes to uh, to overcome that, that factor that hurt gravity and hurt La La Land a few years ago. And again, when you look at the Academy trends recently, they like to award films with multiple wins, but not in best picture. They like them in the tech categories, but they don't always or rarely carry over to Best Picture. That's where we see passion films like Spotlight, passion films like Moonlight, passion films like Green Book. Uh, you know, for the, the you know the majority of the voters, I guess that year. Uh, you know, the passion votes for Twelve Years a Slave. The passion votes for uh, King. Well, King Speech had a bunch of other stuff, sure. But um, that's where we see the passion really come out is in that picture category. The one that the voters say, I just have to give that one something and it's like parasite feels to me more than any other film on this list aside from maybe jojo for the the diehards in the academy other than that that's the that's the film where the most passion outward passion is at that's the that's the the case this year i think and then um uh let's see there was one other thing i was gonna say i totally i just had it now it slipped uh i'm sorry um 
Uh, it was with the three wins thing. It was something like that. But oh yeah, yeah. Okay, didn't have that. It was um, another thing. Every it seems everybody say is saying the safe money is on 1917. So so many people are predicting 1917, and so many of these people predicted Roma last year. So many of these people predicted uh, three billboards like me a couple years ago. Many of them, if not all of them, said La La Land three years ago. So many of them, including myself, said The Revenant five, uh, four years ago. Guess what? All those wrong. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to follow them off the cliff this time. I'm, be, you know, it, you know, I'm not going to be alone here. I don't think. I think so. A lot of people have uh, kind of switched over here to Parasite, or they've definitely are thinking about it. You know, in the last kind of lead up to it. I think you know, people want to kind of vote for their own thing here this year. I feel like so many people, not so many, but many people like myself, kind of feel that way. It's like I've been following you guys, and you know, you guys sound so right when you say this, this, this. But no, anyways. And another thing too, I think Roma also had a little bit to do with this too, because you know, it was more or less you know the given you know big time front runner last year going into the Oscars. So you know, there was that mentality of oh, a foreign language film can do it. Um, so I think once we had that mentality last year, it almost feels like the uh, the underdog this year. And again, that's another thing that Parasite has going for it. And you could, yeah, JoJo definitely has it going for it. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is starting to feel like it a little bit. It definitely was starting to feel like it before Critics' Choice Night. And that was, it, it's the underdog this year. It's like, and as we saw last year, Green Book especially, they go for the underdog sometimes. You know, Moonlight, big time underdog. Guess what happened? So, you know, Spotlight, in a way, kind of became an underdog by the end of that uh, end of that season, uh, when The Revenant really started taking off. So, you know what? Yeah, and true, uh, Boyhood uh, and Gravity were underdogs their respective years. They did not pan out. So it doesn't mean it always happens. But Parasite definitely feels a bit like a mix... Well, I shouldn't say a, a complete mixture of uh, Moonlight and Green Book. Not in the qual, not as far as the film, not as far as the story, but as far as the um, the uh, uh, perception of the films, I should say. Moonlight definitely was, you know, oh, I wish it was this one. You know, uh, so many people, I think uh, many Academy voters included, thought, oh, it should, you know, you know, La La Land's going to win it, but it should be this one. You know, so on and so forth. I think that mentality definitely feels like it could be in play here this year, where it's like 1917 is going to get it. But I wish it was Parasite. And uh, that could definitely pave the way for the film to take off and win. Um, whereas Green Book, uh, you know, a little bit of that was it had early prestige early on and kind of stayed through the season, you know, kept up, even if it wasn't winning every last thing, like Parasite. It, you know, it had enough wins, including uh, for Parasite, Screen Actors Guild. And that's another thing, too, that I thought back on was... Sure, it doesn't have any acting nominations, but the best you can do in respect of that, you know, aside from that, is have a Screen Actors Guild win, and they did. And guess what? It was ensemble <laughs> for a foreign language film. Again, historically, foreign language films do not great at Screen Actors Guild. They really struggle at Screen Actors Guild. So not a, so, let alone getting a cast of unknown, uh, you know, foreign-born performances uh, performers nominated for ensemble in an upset. Then you give it to them, you know. It's like, wow, that definitely shows, even if the actors couldn't find somebody to vote for, which, Song Kang Ho, come on. <laughs> I saw the film again. It's like, yeah, that that's that's probably one of my top five performances in that uh, supporting actor uh, category this year. Um, I would say, you know, I, it might be sacrilege to say, I say put him in over Brad Pitt. Oh, totally. <laughs> but um, anyways, um it's, it just feels like even the actors are saying, well, yeah, we, we like the movie too. Remember, the acting branch is the biggest uh, gr uh, branch of the Academy. And, you know, the films that did get a lot of acting nominations, like Marriage Story, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, The Irishman got a couple, uh, Little Women got a couple. It just feels like they're, you know, that's not their movies this year. The movies that really have a shot here, it feels like, you know, JoJo, you, know, you could still argue Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It could have a major upset come from behind win. Uh, 1917, especially, no acting support. Parasite, no acting support, sure. But there's so much passion around the film, and the acting branch was behind it, you know, the crossover with SAG, at least. And I think, even though, yeah, there's a lot of TV, you know, people at SAG, true. But, I don't know. I think there's enough, you know, there was enough energy in that room, especially the moment uh, uh, during the SAG Awards when the cast came out, and it was a standing ovation. It was like, okay, if this doesn't win ensemble... 
you definitely know that the actors like this movie a lot. They like the movie. They like the performers. This is, you know, again, they didn't know who these people were a year ago. Now they're standing up and, and applauding for and cheering them. That's how much they cared for the movie, cared for the performers. And that, you know, I think that definitely uh, could be another factor, you know, kind of a representative of, you know, the Oscars through their history. Never awarded a foreign-based film that wasn't, you know, from Hollywood or, or from, well, foreign-based from Britain, I should say, yeah. I don't think too many foreign-produced films are made in Hollywood. But, um, uh, it's kind of uh, oxymoron there. But, um, yeah, but this is one where it's like, it feels like it has what it takes to break down that wall. To finally get one of those films in to win. You know what? And I could, again, I could be dead wrong. I could be shooting myself in the foot with the same rule that I didn't think of last year that I that was in the back of my head and I ignored it and I still went Roma and I'm ignoring it again and I'm going with Parasite. But you know what? I don't know. It just It just feels like this is the one that has jumped out to me. And... Yeah, and another thing too, uh, I, probably a major thing, another thing that really helped me here, screenplay. Remember, in the last 10 years, only two films have not won their respective screenplay prize and best picture, Shape of Water and uh, uh, The Artist. You could argue both those years were very, 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 very competitive years, especially I, I think the 2017 year for Shape of Water. It's like three billboards, get out, arguably, yeah, Shape of Water too were in a, you know, pretty dead heat. Lady Bird had a fight in that as well. It's like you had a really tough time getting that screenplay category. And I, yeah, I, I, it should have been Get Out. I should have gotten that right 100%, but I didn't. Um, you know, I, I, I again thought back to lining up screenplay and picture. So yeah, I could be wrong here and it could be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and 1917 for picture and those two categories. But yep, you know what? I, I just think back to that and it's like, I think, I think, I think, I think that's what it's going to be. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, that again, that's that's a weird tro. It would never have happened for with his screenplay picture foreign language film. It could pick up editing. Editing, I think, is close. That would be four wins, which, again, you know, you look at a lot of the Best Picture winners lately. King's Speech had four wins. Shape of Water had four wins. Birdman had four wins. So four has kind of been the magic number lately for Best Picture. Seven for 1917 would be the most Oscar wins of any film, including Best Picture, since Hurt Locker. Um, which I think had eight. Um, uh, let me just do a Google search here. I always wanted to look this up. But how many? No, not how many films has Samuel Jackson been in? At least 130, yeah. Uh, how many Oscars did Joker win? Yeah, it's going to be two. Um, um, the Hurt Locker. There we go. I thought it had eight. No, th that one had six. Okay. So that would even beat the Hurt Locker. Okay. What? Picture director, screenplay, sound editing, sound mixing, film editing. Oh, okay. I thought it had more than that. Okay. Yeah, so that would be... Yeah, you'd have... Slumdog Millionaire had eight wins, if I remember right. Eight wins for that one. Yeah. So this would be the most in Slumdog Millionaire. And again, that's going back to a pre-preferential ballot era in the Academy. Again, I make this argument in my uh, Culture Vultures article, which should be out pretty quick here. Uh... 15 years ago, 1917 would have won probably seven or eight of its 10. And it would have been, yeah, would, you know, we would have all probably picked it and it probably would have won. Uh, but I think if La La Land and, uh, you know, a few other films, you know, in the past decade have, have proven to us again and again and again and again, the days of the sweeps at the Oscars and taking Best Picture are over. They're behind us. If they happen again, they're going to be anomalies. 1917 could be an anomaly this year. True. That's true. But it just it just feels like with the preferential ballot, with so many people now thinking, you know, it's not just a blind vote for Best Picture now. It's not just a popularity contest. It's like they really try to, you know, find a film that's that's a consensus. And uh, 1917 might be a consensus pick. It very well could be. Parasite could be a consensus pick. Again, not too many people hate the movie. There are definitely people, I think, that are lukewarm on the movie. A few of them are in the Academy, for sure. But how many of them are outnumbered or, you know, at the same number as the people who love the movie or really, really respect it? That is a good question. That is a good question. Plus, 
Uh, Moonlight has, uh, you know, had a little thing going for it where the internet culture, the kind of blogosphere culture, you know, so many people, again, were really hyping up that film and really downvoting on La La Land because it felt like safe, felt conventional. They wanted something more special to win, something more unique, something that really hadn't happened before. You know, a film about a gay black man winning Best Picture, it's like it hadn't happened before. It's like they wanted something new, and it happened. I wonder if, you know, and that, I think, affects some voters, not as many as uh, they would like to think, definitely. Uh, how, ma- how many of them are backing 1917 this year? Probably a handful. How many of them are backing Parasite? That's everybody else, it feels to me. Uh, I, you know, I could, again, I, I might not be 100% on that, but man, it just feels like Parasite has so many different angles it can take this prize from. I just can't ignore that. I just can't ignore that, no matter how much, you know, I might just go against my gut instinct to pick, you know, if I were to pick 1970 and go against my gut instinct and say, okay, you're picking this one. It's probably going to win. It's front runner to win right now. But again, how many years have we gone into the Oscars and seen the front runner come up short? Roma, La La Land, Three Billboards, arguably, uh, The Revenant, arguably, you know, uh, Boyhood, arguably, you know, there were definitely people that thought that. Gravity, maybe not the front runner that year, definitely had a lot of people going for it. So, yeah, it just it just feels like another one of those years where that could happen. So, and we've had so many of them recently. True, we could be due for just an easy year at the Oscars, but I don't know. Whenever I think that, like La La Land year, look what happens. So, all right, uh, that I, I feel like I've said my piece on this. Uh, what happens happens. It's out of my hands now. <laughs> but uh, Regis, that's my final answer. Parasite. Uh, I guess it's option C. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the million bucks rains down on my head or if I just get to walk home with my tail between my legs. Uh, both options are very possible here. So, uh, yep, I know. And that's the other thing, too. I think a lot of us are going to come back on Sunday night, Monday morning, and say this phrase. It was that, and I should have known it. Because I, I think there's so many different arguments for, you know, why this film will win, this film will win, this film will not win. It's like there's so many things. Like 1917 just had all the momentum. Of course, that's why it won. Parasite. It was such a popular pick, such a uh, an underdog. That's why it won. Yeah, I think so many of us are going to have so many, uh, especially that uh, the, those of us who are you know authors for different sites and stuff, uh, newspaper editorials, so on and so forth. So many of us are going to have that attitude of it was this the whole time. We should have seen it coming, you know, and all that stuff. I, I feel like whatever wins, we're going to have that uh, that sentimentality going around. So. Yeah, it's it's a tough year. It was a shortened year, which definitely, you know, makes it a weird year, makes it different than any other year we've ever had in Oscar history. So let's let's see how, how the cards turn out here. I don't know. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So uh, we'll have another uh, uh, hostless Oscars this year as we go into the ninety uh, first Academy Awards this Sunday. Uh, I will be here not doing we won't do live, you know, reactions to the winners and stuff, but I'll be back here as soon as it's over. We'll do a quick wrap-up on the night of, and again, we'll see how happy I am. We'll see how depressed I am, how upset at myself I am that I didn't pick the winner. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes down. Or we'll see if we have a jaw dropper like a JoJo Rabbit or something like that. We'll see. All right, uh, that's enough for today, kiddos. We will be back here on uh, Sunday night. Uh, probably I'll be probably looking sharp as ever. So, um, yep, we'll, uh, we'll catch you then. Good luck to everybody who's predicting. Let me know uh, what you're thinking, what you're voting on, what you think could happen, what you think should happen, you know, so on and so forth. I want to hear it all. I want to hear what you guys think here. Am I crazy nuts? Am I right on the money? Am I way off? Am I close but not there? I don't know. Does anybody know? I don't think the, I don't think the Academy even knows. Nobody knows. <laughs>